if the property appreciates by 20, 30%, we haven't had a 20 or 30% increase in our equity. We've had a hundred percent increase in our equity, right? Hello, and welcome to Pillars of Wealth Creation, where we talk about creating financial success with a special focus on business and real estate. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. Now, let's get to it. Hello, and welcome back to Pillars of Wealth Creation. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. With me, excited to have Bronson Hill. Bronson, how are you doing today? I'm good, Todd. Great to connect with you, man. We were talking that we've never actually met in, in person or face to face. So, but we do have a lot of good mutual friends. I feel like we're like connected and uh, yeah. Michael Block and Drew Whitson and all these connections we have. So it's great to be able to connect with you, man. It feels like we've known each other forever, doesn't it? I know it does. Somehow. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> and, and we're in this mastermind together. And of course, yeah. you're not going to be at the live meeting because it's duck hunting or uh, moose hunting season or elk, whatever, whatever you're hunting, it's going to be deer, some sort deer of hunting, hunting, right? Deer yeah. hunting. <laughs> all the same. That's awesome. Uh, Cool, man. Well, a little bit about Bronson. He's a general partner in 2000, about 2000 multifamily units uh, worth over $200 million. Bronson co-leads a large in-person multifamily meetup in Pasadena, California called uh, FIBI Pasadena Multifamily. What's, what's that stand for? Uh, it stands for for investors by investors. So Got it's just it. basically, it's a no pitch meeting. We just, you know, we're investors it. and we talk with other investors. Love it. That's awesome. Uh, Bronson's also the host of the Mailbox Money Show and understands uh, the investor mindset, having spoken individually over the phone with over 1,200 investors and raised over $25 million for real estate deals. Uh, you're also an author, How to Use Inflation to Your Advantage. Well, that's not, that's not a, a good book for right now. You know? <laughs> not relevant uh, at all. No, not relevant <laughs> at all. Oh, man. So, and you are uh, a, a capital raising coach at the Kingdom REI, which is a faith-based group. Um, you're, so you're helping investors, you know, find deals, uh, raise funds uh, for larger multifamily deals. With that said, Bronson, give our listeners a bit more about your background, then we'll just dive in and get right to it. All right. Sounds good. Well, I was a high paid sales professional in the medical field. So I go into surgery and I'd help physicians with their heart surgical equipment. It was very interesting. I enjoyed it. I got paid well, uh, but I just had this desire to be an entrepreneur and to want to create passive income. I just have so many ideas and things that I want to do and places I want to travel. And so I uh, started buying single family houses because I thought that's what you do, right? To become Don't financially know, free, start buying houses as everybody does. And then I got to four or five houses and I realized this is a lot of work and I'm not really cash flowing very much at all. And so I had a cousin who had been doing uh, multifamily forever and we just hadn't seen each other in years. And he's like, hey, this, you know, you getting 30 houses, which was my plan. He's like, that sounds like a lot of work. Why don't you do multifamily investing? And I said, well, I'd love to, but I don't have the money. And he said, well, you can raise the money. So he said, check out this training, go to this event, listen to this podcast. So I just did, kind of did everything he said. Ended up starting a meetup in Pasadena, California, where I live. Uh, this was just a few months after I kind of learned about multifamily and I met my first investor. Somebody just came up randomly and was like, Hey, I'd invest in one of your deals. And I'm thinking like, I don't have any deals, but I'm like, okay, well, you know, let me, let's get, get coffee. So he said, I gave him a sample deal of this is what a deal would look like. Sure. And then I introduced him to another guy at that same meeting. And, uh, that was my first hundred thousand first, you know, general partner being a part of a deal. And then I partnered with, uh, uh, somebody we know well, Michael Blanc, and we raised $15 million together over the next 18 months. So it went really fast. It's gone great. Now we're at about 30 million, uh, raised. And so it's been a lot of fun. Nice. Nice. It's, it's, it's that, uh, the deal deck, right. Or that the slide deck. So that's, that's what you're presenting to him. You said, Hey, yeah. Kind of it's called the, the sample, the sample deal package, right? That's yeah. what Michael calls it, right? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I did too. I I, uh, I was flipping houses, and I had investors that were with me with the flips, and I sat down with a couple of them. I said, "Here's what, here's what kind of a deal would look like," and I brought them through a couple of deals. Of course, mine looked like super Mickey Mouse. I it was like a you know Word document with you know a couple <laughs> little pictures on it. You yeah, know, it was, it was pretty bad, but they're like, yeah, yeah, okay, sounds good. Uh, that's funny. So, um, what? So, what? Do you, what's your main focus today? You've got quite a few things going on. Is there a certain thing that you're really focused on that you're really passionate about, or you you kind of doing yeah. multiple things? Yeah, so I'm doing a few things. Uh, primarily, our focus is working with business owners um, or professionals to help uh, reduce taxes to grow passive wealth uh, over time. We have a a, a couple of uh, uh, medical professionals in California that sold a business for about $5 million. 
and they were able to figure out a way to pay almost zero taxes on it. So again, I'm not a CPA. I'm not a tax consultant necessarily, but there are creative ways around that. So I love seeing things like that. They probably saved at least $2 million in taxes between the two of them. So really, really incredible. Uh, but we're doing, uh, primarily we've raised about 13 million in the last 12 months, uh, multifamily deals uh, in Jacksonville, Florida. We're also doing uh, something kind of different. Um, it's, it's an ATM machine fund which is uh, the fifth largest operator of ATMs in the country. We've raised about five and a half million for that in the last three or four months. So, uh, you know, just different opportunities in, uh, I wouldn't say in real estate, but kind of around real estate. So we're looking at some other oil and gas and other types of stuff that's really unique. So I'm finding right now a lot of investor sentiment. I think it's a great time to buy still. There's not a, a, loss. a lot of investors have started to kind of put the pause button because I think the confused mind just says, wait. And the challenge with that and inflation is that if inflation is not, eight, nine percent, like they officially reported, if it's more like 15 to 18 percent, which I think it actually probably is, somebody could lose 30 to 40 percent of their purchasing power over a two year period. So, yeah, um, so I think I think having other things or just continuing to invest even right now, I think is it's, it's still a great time to invest. Yeah, I agree. I mean, <laughs> you you don't know. So the, the, the problem with waiting, of course, is that you don't know. You don't know what you don't know, which you have no clue what's going to come down the pipeline, right? We right. have no clue if inflation is going to keep on ripping. We have no clue. You just don't know. And so if you can find a property that still makes sense, why are you, why are you not buying it? Right. Why, mm -hmm. especially if you can get good financing for it. Yeah. I think that's absolutely. your biggest risk, right? Right now, your biggest risk is it's not that you're overpaying for a property. It's that you have bad financing, bad terms, bad location, you know, those types of things. Not that you're overpaying. If you're overpaying, yeah, that sucks, but the values will go back up. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I just did a video on this recently, but you know, you have all these inflationary and, and kind of deflationary factors of what's going to happen. And right now we're seeing on a negative side, rates are going up, which causes uh, valuations potentially to go down or just, you know, afford it. People can't afford as much or even the, it squeezes the numbers a bit. Same with, you know, construction costs going up and labor costs and cap rate, you know, cap rate insurance or you getting those, getting those caps on the insurance rate. Everything's getting more expensive on that side. However, uh, rents, particularly in an area like Jacksonville, where we buy, it's gone up, they've gone up 19% in the last 10 months. And we're only continuing to see that because of the growth that's happening in these markets. So when we have a value add deal that, you know, we're paying, I mean, even if we're paying, we're not paying 7%, but even, even if you're paying 7%, if inflation is eight to 17 or 18%, you're paying below the rate of inflation for the actual loan. And you know, rents, I, I think it's just gonna drive higher ownership costs, which is gonna continue to drive rents because there's less buyers out there now. So I think rent, I think I just think rents are gonna continue to rise. We you know we're way short of apartments, and I think it's just a great way to be able to hedge inflation rents and inflation really go hand in hand. I think we have like quite a bit more inflation in the future that's gonna continue to come. So yeah, and here, here's what I, how I think of it too, is that if, even if rents don't continue to rise and I'm buying an asset and, and the cash flows and it makes sense, maybe I don't return my investors, you know, 15 to 20% IRR, but it still ends up working out in their favor. They still right. end up getting, you know, 5, 10, 15% IRR. And guess what? If you look now, I mean, just you just go and look at the the down road, the the down roads and say, hey, what's the what's the history been over the last five years? It's like five percent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if I can give you five percent as an investor, that's not what we planned, right? That's not what we want to do. We certainly want to do better. But if rents don't go up, and if the market doesn't go up, we're still probably going to re receive five plus percent returns, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's, uh, I mean, really, you know, the whole question comes down to compared to what, right? So if you're going to hold yeah. cash, you know, you're losing money. You're losing. Uh, if you're going to buy, if you're going to buy in the stock market, you know, I think there's a lot of risk there, especially yeah. as rates rise. Um, so then you start to say, well, what, what do I put my money in? What do I do if I just hold it, which a lot of people are doing? Um, they're going to see a lot of loss of their purchasing power. And it's, it's weird mm -hmm. to think about. We haven't had this for really since the seventies or eighties, early eighties. Yeah. Um, and so people have really, you haven't lived through it, but uh, getting into something that's real. I mean, I think there's so many advantages. Um, you know, I have, I have an ebook I wrote how to use inflation to your advantage. And it just talks about this of you basically can borrow at a, a rate that's below inflation 
and you're getting a leveraged position in real estate. So if we're only putting 20 you know, to 30% or so down on a property, if the property appreciates by 20, 30%, we haven't had a 20 or 30% increase in our equity. We've had a hundred percent increase in our equity, right? So we, we, we're using leverage to be able to get that. And so we know we're going to pay it off in dollars that are worth less than they are now because of inflation. We're paying off future dollars that are worth less. And yeah, that's so uh, also the assets can be worth more yeah. because we know over the long term, 5, 10, 15, 20, all these assets that were, you know, these, these apartments, there, there are only so many, there's a shortage. It's, they're going to be worth substantially more than they are now just because of currency creation, because of yeah. trends, because of shortages. So I, I just don't know if there's really any better place you can put it uh, than in multifamily. So I'm, I'm continuing to buy yeah, that's 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 powerful right there. Um, yeah, it's it's a, a great asset to be in. So what what are you or what have you seen? You know, you've talked to twelve hundred plus investors. Like, what are the maybe the, the top couple questions or or concerns or things that you hear from investors? I want to talk a little bit for the listeners that are thinking about wow, how how can I raise $30 million, right? Like this guy's raised $30 million in a pretty short period of time. How could I go do the same thing? So what are these investors, you know, concerned about thinking about wanting to know? Yeah. So, um, you know, obviously that's a lot of calls, um, you know, with, with individuals typically, um, you know, people are curious of how it works. And most people that you talk to, or I've talked to, they've never invested in uh, either never invested in real estate or never done a passive investment like syndication. And so I, the way I kind of look at this whole process is like when you go to Starbucks, uh, right, you know, you're going to have a certain experience or maybe it's your favorite restaurant. You're going to have a certain experience, right? The food's going to be a certain way. The service is going to be a certain way. And Starbucks would be great because you go to any Starbucks anywhere and you generally know kind of what experience and what that drink's going to taste like, what the ambiance and even how they're friendly they're going to be because they've created an experience around all of that, right? So for you, if they've never invested in, syndication, they'd never invested in multifamily, or at least they've never invested with you, um, you've got to really set the table. And what that means is you've got to let them know, hey, this is exactly how this is going to work. We're going to have a getting to know you process here. I'm going to share a little bit about us. We're going to share about our values. We're going to see if it's a fit. I'm going to tell you how it works when we do have a deal. When we do have a deal, this is how this works, whatever. So you're just thinking about, you know, if someone knows nothing, how can you onboard them in a way where they have enough information that they're kind of teed up and ready to go so that you've answered about 80 or 90% of their questions every time before they even have a question asked, right? You're just kind of saying, here's something you should know as you go into this. Because if most people yeah. only know stocks and bonds, we're taught these are traditional and there's there's you know major, major billions and billions of dollars around this. There's, there's nobody educating around the stuff that's in kind of the mainstream or the you know Wall Street type of stuff. There's nobody doing really what we do as syndicators. So we've got to really create a lot of education just and, and repeat ourselves a lot of just how this works. Every single educational thing, I just try to think through, you know, what's the average person that doesn't know anything about this? Uh, I hadn't really heard of syndication probably six, six, seven years ago. And now I'm, you know, syndicating, we've got, you know, over 200 million, 250 million. And, and so it's fun to like, see that happen. Right. But how does that happen? It happens through education. So we're educators, we teach people, we help them along the path. And then, you know, we just try to really set the expectation that this is how we're going to communicate. This is the type of way we're going to work with you. And, Hopefully people feel comfortable with you and they decide to work with you, but not everybody. I'm out of those. We, we did a study on over, you know, over a thousand of those calls. The first 1000, only 22% invested. So it was not everybody. It was like one out of five yeah. or one out of, you know, and, and of those that invested um, the average investment size was 72,000. And so that means I, I kind of calculated out of my math might be slightly off, but it was around $12,000 per call, whether they invested or not. Right. So just getting somebody on the phone, there's incredible power of doing that because you're in the process of just having a one-on-one -on -one conversation and educating. Yeah. I have found probably very similar statistics. I think we're, you know, I haven't, I haven't broken it down, but I bet if I did um, just, just thinking about kind of my investor database right now and thinking about how many investors we have, um, we're probably not very far off of where you're at. And as far as like the average investment size, you know, we're, we're not very far off that either. So I think that's probably generally across the board, uh, the results you're going to get, you're going to have to do a lot of phone calls. You're going to have to talk to a lot of people in order to get the investors that are going to fund your deals. And that's just how it is. And you, and it's part of the process and you have to educate people. Um, I love how you just, you know, you, you say, you just got to break it down, make it simple. I mean, so many, there's, there's so many people like yourself, six, eight years ago or whatever it was that didn't know anything about syndication. 
You know, I was doing real estate in 2008 through about 2014, and I had no clue what syndication was. You know, I'd heard about it, but I didn't know it. I didn't understand it. And then finally I learned about it. I'm like, whoa, this is something I can do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so, uh, but there's so many investors that, or so many potential investors that really don't know much about it. So just breaking it down and make it so, making it simple. Right. Um, I think so many right. people try to talk over and that's, that's a big mistake. Right. Yeah, no, I think it, it really, you know, and again, that's something I try to do on the phone too, is figure out, you know, is this the person I'm talking to? Have they done 20 syndications and they're asking you very technical questions on, yeah. you know, your cap rate reversion at exit or something, you know, it's different, asking conversation. different type of questions versus the doctor has $5 million in net worth and has only done stocks. Well, that's going to be a very more, much more basic conversation. Yeah. And they just got to get their head around that this is actually is not a scam and this actually yeah. works, right? It's legal. And so a lot of the people too, I also recommend for a lot of, you know, those conversations, Hey, if you go to a local meetup or if you go to a conference, you can talk with other passive investors. And that's amazing because, you know, I, I'm incentivized, mm -hmm. you're incentivized to say, hey, syndication is great, but there are people that have been doing this for years. They're in 30 deals or 50 deals. They've been doing it for years and years and years, and they make their living off of being a passive investor, right? So when somebody meets somebody like that, that's actually a transformational thing for them. It's not just information. It's like, this person's doing it and it's, and it's happening this way. And it's the same thing as a syndicator, right? When I meet somebody who's raised a hundred million dollars, I'm like, wow, how could I do that? Right. And I start thinking about the ways I can grow and scale there, which is really cool. Yeah. What do you think? Uh, I mean, are most of your um, conversations virtual or you uh, try to do in person or what, what's your thought on that? Um, yeah. So I try to do, you know, most of them are virtual. We just schedule them. It's just easier. Um, you know, any live event or anything, I have, I run a meetup, like I mentioned in California, we had it last night and it's just, it's just kind of hard to just be able to have a quiet place to sit down for 20 minutes, but you know, you can schedule something say, Hey, let's schedule a call. And in 20 to 30 minutes, you can get a lot of information from somebody. You can create a good, and it usually doesn't even take that long, but you get enough time to really have a conversation with somebody and figure out where they're at. So um, I, I think the whole thing and even why we do this, right. And why you do the show probably is so that you can scale and you get your message out to more people and be able yeah. to really teach about the pillars of wealth and, and, and obviously people responding to that, which I think is awesome. So I think if you want to be somebody who scales, you've got to kind of go from one to one to also be doing one to many, and then maybe on the back and have a way of, Hey, join our club, or let's have a call or whatever. And, and, and try to get more people into your funnel to, uh, to get on your list. I'm curious about this uh, question. I've been thinking about this a lot because I just, uh, I talked to so many people that, that, you know, they want to get, I think the, the most common thought by most people is they, they, they think real estate is a good tool. They want to use it. They, they've heard the advantages of it, uh, but most people think they should buy a single family house or a duplex. What do you, what do you do? Like, what do you say to, about that? Um, you know, people do it. I mean, that's how I started. A lot of people start that way. I mean, I tell people now, I'm like, you know, um, I think you should skip the whole single family, small multifamily thing, anything you do yourself. I think the sooner you can, you can go bigger, uh, the sooner, I mean, everybody I know wishes they'd started sooner in multifamily, you know, and I'm glad I started when I did. I mean, you can't kick yourself because you started when you started, but, um, I just think in general, um, you know, we, uh, it's very, it's very, it's a very knowable thing to think about single family. Cause it's like, oh yeah, people live in a house. Like I know about houses, right? Well, I can go buy another house. It's a very understandable, oh, I pay yeah. rent. So, you know, it's, it's like a very, oh my gosh, a hundred units. That sounds absolutely insane, but it's something that's crazy. Like, yeah, I don't know if you'd agree with this statement, but buying a hundred unit apartment, apartment complex is actually easier than buying a four to 10 unit property, right? Because it's the same transaction, but you get a lot more help. You have yeah. full-time staff that are dedicated to the property. You've got maintenance people that all they do is work on that property. You've got a property manager, you've got all these people and you get really good staff. If you've got a 10 unit or four unit, it's hard. Typically you don't have a live-in property manager right. and you've got you're a lot more to deal with. You're doing a lot of your day-to-day. -day. You're doing a lot yourself. So the whole thing yeah. is for me, I've set up my business that I would rather find a way to scale and go 10 X than to like, just go these little small add-ins. And I got, I, it took me to get four to five, four to five houses to realize that, that like, I just couldn't scale it both from a capital standpoint, as well as a time standpoint, because I was working. I was like, I just, this is just not working versus mm -hmm. as a passive investor, you can scale to the moon with passive investing. And also as an operator, you know, doing a deal that's a hundred units versus, you know, doing a, one that's 500 units or the cost 10 times as much. It's really not that much different. It's just more, yeah. it's just more numbers and more people, you know? 
Yeah. Well, you're a lot smarter than me because it took me like a hundred to figure it out. So <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, man. Well, you got a good start. You got, you got a lot of good experience though, Todd, right? You got a lot I, of lessons from that. I got a lot of stories. That's for sure. Right. <laughs> uh, you can tell story after story after story. It's, it's always fun. Awesome. Um, so what's tell, tell me a little bit about uh, what you're doing here with the, with the kingdom REI and, and kind of why you're doing that. Yeah, so Kingdom REI is a faith-based group for uh, Christian entrepreneurs to help uh, learn how to either raise money and, and do what we do and do big deals like you and I, Todd, or to actually be one finding the deals and operating them, which are kind of two different paths. Um, so, you know, we found that it's, it's just a great group of people that, you know, similar minded and it's a mastermind, highly ambitious people wanting to, to grow. So it's been awesome. Um, as a capital raising coach there, we have weekly calls just, you know, uh, this is how I've done it. This is, you know, just giving people feedback and how people get started. And one of the things I think a lot of people are really wondering is like, how do you get started? Like, if you want to go from like, I want to get started in this. And the first thing that I just be, become more and more clear is just to put your list together, right? Make a list of all the people that, yeah. you know, you went to high school yeah. with, you went to church with, you know, your neighbors, your people you used to work, you know, all these different people, put them together and you should be get at least a hundred people. And then once you have that list, you can just start sending out you know, information of them. You can maybe create a lead magnet, which is my, you know, how to use inflation to your advantage, my ebook. There's different things you can create and, or like a podcast like this. And then people, uh, it's amazing how it just grows. And then you have people reaching out. They're like, oh, that's amazing. This person saw me on YouTube and they invested hundred K. Like I've had a few of those the last few months where it's been like, wow, that really happened. That's amazing. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, I think that's so powerful right there. Is so many people don't know where to get started. Oh, I don't know. If, I don't know how much money I could raise. I got to get all these commitments. No, just just start with the list and just start educating people and start making them aware of what you're doing. Uh, but yeah, like you said, just start with your friends, family, acquaintances. You know, people you've worked with, so on. Get that list. Sure, you can cross out that. You know, maybe that uh, cousin that yeah, it has to dig in the couch cushions to just to you know pay their rent every single month. Maybe they don't need to be on the list, but you'd be surprised too. You know, some, some of my investors, you know, I got an investor that drives a rusty minivan and uh, lives in just a, you know, just a mod, very, very modest uh, suburban home, you know, not, nothing special. You'd never think that they'd be able to invest. Sure enough, they, they're, uh, they're pretty good, pretty good investor actually. You know, they invest quite a bit. So you just, uh, you don't know. Uh, there's, a, there's plenty of the millionaire next doors. Mm -hmm. uh, and and yeah. just put yourself out there. I, I agree. So yeah. what's a mistake that you've made along this journey and how have you learned from it? Um, I think there's lots of mistakes. I think there's lots of things we learn from. Um, I think one of the challenges when you're getting started is you just want to get a deal done. You know, we talk about the law of the first deal, right? You get the deal done and it's just getting the first one, getting from zero to one is the hardest part. I mean, it can take years or you take a, you know, a year or six months. Some people do it very quickly. But that's the hardest part, you know, from when once you actually are a general partner on a deal, you have some a deal that you've done, you're not just somebody who likes real estate or you're, in, you know, in passively invested, but you're somebody who's like on the operation side. And that, that was a huge change for me when that happened. But um, I think when I, you know, one of the challenges with that is that you need a deal when you're starting. And also, you may not partner with the best uh, partners. And, you know, there's been examples, I won't give any specifics, but over the, there's times that, you know, I've realized I've worked with certain partners where I'm like, you know, these are, these are really great partners. Let's do more deals. And other ones I'm like, you know, um, I don't know that I do more deals with these partners just because we have a different set of values or we're kind of, there's sure. some differences on yeah. philosophy. And so, you know, uh, again, I'm not trying to put in my firm. I'm very grateful for any partners that we've worked with, but I just think over, it takes some time to figure out really what you value, what's important, both from an investment philosophy and where you want to invest and also just how the operation goes. And if you're somebody who is on the capital side and you're, you know, you're bringing that, you're doing other things, but you're more of kind of a secondary role in the operations, you don't have as much control over how that deal goes. And that's been challenging. So I just think there's a lot of learning that happens and it's really, you know, sometimes the best deal you do is the one you didn't do. Uh, in the beginning, it's just, you know, getting a first deal is so important, but it is uh, very important as well to really trust your gut and just say, you know, I, I want to really work with really good partners because um, you know, not everybody works the same way. Yeah, that's so valuable. Get, getting getting in with the right partners and, and yeah, you're right. I mean, the first deal is so important, but it's it's so important to get that first deal, but it's also so important to get a deal that works well. And it doesn't mean you have to be paralyzed by getting the perfect deal, right? Yeah. But you have to get a deal that's going to work out. You have to have, you have to get a deal that's not going to lose money. 
certainly. Right. And you have to partner with the right people that are going to going to work with you because you are your reputation is your partners. Right. Right. And so if, if you partner with a guy or a gal who's unethical and, you know, dishonest and doesn't communicate and steals and stuff like that, that's your reputation. Yeah. And, uh, it's going to take a long time to change that. That's true. That's true. It, it's, uh, and so, you know, it, it is interesting too, that this is a team sport. It's very difficult to do a yeah. hundred units or 500 units, whatever on your own. That's why having good team members and continue to learn, but you know, that's where also going to events and learning about people's reputation. You have an incredible reputation in the industry. I know it's the first time we've actually had a conversation, but I feel like I know you through the people you work with, through Drew Whitson, through Matt Bronner, through Michael Blanc, through other people. And that reputation follows you, that you're a person that's a, a person of integrity and character. And so, you know, it, it's, it's amazing how word gets out, how people treat people. So that's why yeah. being connected is so important. And if I remember seeing it, I had an investor reach out to me saying, oh, I saw this ad online. And it was this thing about their multifamily, whatever. And I was like, I never heard of this person. Like, I don't know who this person is. They have some click funnel thing about their investment. I was yep. just like, I mean, you, you can, but like, I, I've never heard of them. I've, I know a lot of people and just, I've never heard of this guy. I've never seen their. So, you know, again, I think it's important to just, you know, figure out who has a reputation and, you know, um, it's not that those people, you know, they're not trying to do well. I just think who you're associated with or who's on the team is important. Yeah, you're right. And reputations, you know, I, you know, I appreciate you saying that about me. And I'd say the same thing about you. I mean, you're, you're, you're known in the industry for being honest and ethical and being somebody people can trust. And, you know, word, like you said, word travels and it is a small industry. It's just, it's a pretty small niche mm -hmm. industry. And so people know who's the the people to trust and, and the investors are out there asking too. I'm sure you get plenty of investors that ask about other people's deals and, and, and other, you know, sponsors and people talk. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah. yeah, just, just making sure that you're really paying attention to your reputation and to kind of how you're holding yourself and doing business is, is so valuable. Um, what, so you know, you, you've, you've done a lot of stuff here over the last couple of years. What would you attribute? Like, what are your claim? Like, let's call it three key, three success, you know, tips that you can provide. You can pass on to our listeners, things that mm. really have, have helped you along your journey. Yeah. So, um, I think the three things that are helping the most, I took a couple of notes before, so I'm kind of referring to them, but, um, the two things that I think really get you from where you are to where you want to go, I think in just about anything is uh, networking and education. So when it comes to networking, you know, it's not, education is great. And I think I, I read a lot of books. I read typically over 60 books a year. I try to go to conferences to learn. There's a lot of value in education and there's educated formal programs. Um, but I think the networking is awesome too, because sometimes yeah. it's not just information, it's transformation, right? When I meet someone mm -hmm. who Hey, here's my story. I just did my first deal. Well, how'd you do it? What'd you do? And you hear the story. It's like, oh, I could do that. You know, or yeah. now I've raised 30 million. I talked to Buck Joffrey who has raised 600 million. And he's like, yeah, somebody told me when I'd raised 30 million that, you know, pretty soon it's not that far to go from 30 million to 300 million. And so, and sure enough, pretty much he 10 X in, in like a year or two or something. So, <laughs> um, so, you know, that happens. So I, I think it's just, it's, it's cool though, to see, you know, when you meet people, you'll meet partners, you'll meet investors, you'll meet different people. It just opens your mind to what's possible. So I love that. And the last thing, so networking and education, the last thing is really action. If you just take consistent action, um, it doesn't have to be massive action. You don't have to like quit your job today or anything, but if you just take yeah. action, you listen to a podcast, you go to an event, you go to a conference, you read a books, books on this, you, you, you just are, are calling brokers, you're talking to investors, you're doing those actions. Even if you don't know exactly what you're going to do in the beginning, I thought I was going to be somebody who found deals. And here I am now. And of course I have a sales background. So it makes sense. Well, why didn't you think, you know, but it just took me a while to figure that out. So, uh, but all of it was valuable because I know how to underwrite deals. I know how to look and say, okay, I like this deal for the reason, this reason. I don't like this deal for this reason. And I think that really helps. So I think the more action you take in the area you want to go uh, in relation to that, there's a lot of people that they, they go and they, they learn about all this stuff or they meet interesting people, but they don't ever take any action. And I was yeah. there for probably six, seven years. And then it took finally where I was like, well, I'm, I'm a hundred percent in, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to quit my job in two, three years. I'm, I'm done. And I did, I was able to do it. So, um, you know, I, I think just taking the action is really the thing that separates, you know, people that do it from people that don't. 
when you start taking the action, you're going to learn what you like, what you don't like, what you're good at, what you're not good at. Uh, and if you just, if you're just sitting here in the book and learning and learning and learning, it's like, you know, yeah, you, you thought you were going to be finding deals. You thought you, that's yeah. what you're going to be able to do. But once you start taking action, once you start going through the process, you're like, Hey, I'm really good at this. And yeah. I enjoy doing this. And so it, it, it switched, it changed. And that's how, that's how you get progress, right? Is by yeah. actually taking true action. I couldn't agree with, with that more. So many people want to get educated, educated, educated. And you said education, right? That was one of your three mm -hmm. things. Sure. But th that only goes so far. You can be the smartest brand. And I know, and you know, plenty of people that they know way more than you and I, uh, but they don't do anything. And yeah. they're, they're wanting to, they just don't take action. Have you ever read the book, uh, Compound of compound effect right compound effect. yeah yeah that that's a great book there's also one called the there's one called the slight edge by jeff olson and that one is basically like everything you do has an exponential effect over time so right now it's just very slight but over time or you know if you start smoking today you won't die today or this yep. year or next year but in 10 20 30 years that's going to have an exponential effect versus yeah. if i start working out or i start eating healthier I won't see maybe necessarily benefits of that right away, but over 10, 20, 30 years, it's going to have an exponentially positive effect. So uh, I, I agree. It's just, it's just taking the action and learning and continuing to move forward. Yeah. You can't go to the gym for eight hours today and have a six pack abs and uh, you know, the, the, the perfect, uh, the perfect physique, that's not going to happen, you know, but if you go to the gym for the next six months, for the next six years, you know, and do the, the right things, then you might get that perfect ab and the perfect physique, right? Right. It's not going to come overnight. And it's the same thing with what we're talking about in business too. So love it, man. Um, all right. I got a couple last questions before we wrap up. Sure. What is a book, a favorite book that you're reading right now or, or have read recently that you really like? Yeah, so I read a lot of books. I'm just going to glance at my list here. I think I finished my goal this year was 60 books. Wow. And I've read wow. 60. You're a beast. I think I've read 61 so far. So I mean, I listen to some, I read some. Like, I, you know, people say it doesn't count if you listen. I'm like, no, it does count. I think um, it counts. Yeah. I, well, it, it depends what kind of book it is because if it's an informational book, I'll typically read it. But if it's like a, uh, story. I try to listen to those. Yeah. Uh, I, I just finished this book called Start With Why by Simon Sinek. Mm. That's a great book. Just kind of talking great about book. instead of figuring out the what and the how, start with the why and great companies, they they always start with that. Um, there's also a really good book actually your listeners may enjoy. It's called $100 Million Offers. $100 Million Offers by this guy, Alex Hermosi. And it's probably the most simple way of creating a really good offer. So whether it's a coaching program or it's a low cost thing that you're selling or a course or something. Uh, this guy, you know, at 32 years old is worth over a hundred million dollars. And he just talks about how he's done it. And it's just, it's one of the best books I've ever read on just that. How do you create something compelling for individuals to want to want to be a part of? Hmm. Cool. Cool. Love it. I've, told, I've, I've not heard of that one. Start with the why is a great, or start with why yeah. is great. Um, how do you like to give back? Um, so for me, my big, my big why actually is um, I obviously want to be a good dad, but the second way and the, probably the, the core of all that, the reason for my big financial goals is I really want to end human slavery in the world. Um, today, there's actually, people don't realize that there's actually 20 to 40 million human wow. slaves today, which is about, you know, three times or more the size of Los Angeles. Um, and so it's crazy to think about there are just millions of people all around the world that are stuck in modern day human slavery. And it's things like sexual human slavery. It could be labor. Uh, people are trafficked across borders and people take their passports. And then there's, it's just a very messy thing. But I realize for me, um, you know, these people, it, they're worth it. You know, if my daughter, I know you have kids as well. There's nothing I would, wouldn't do. I mean, it's like the movie Taken, but in, in reality, it's not a lot like that. It's more, um, you know, there's a lot of very unique kind of situations or just stuff that happens where, it's it, there, nobody's out looking for these folks. So it's like, man, I, I just think it's something that everybody should have somebody looking for them, you know, if they're in trouble. Yeah. I think, uh, that's, re that's really, oh, that's really cool. I mean, I, I had no clue that the numbers were, were like that. So, um, people get taken advantage of and they, they don't know where to go to for help. So that, that's, um, that's awesome. All right. So last question what are your three pillars of wealth creation? And maybe you already sat them in the, the previous three, but you got to come up with new ones if you did. <laughs> I come up with new ones. Okay. 
Uh, well, those were kind of my three for, for you know, wealth creation. Um, I, I would say, too, on this side, I mean, I would just go a little deeper on one of them is, um, you know, educate, education is so huge. You know, I mean, people, the average, average American reads uh, less than 12 books a year, 50% read less than four books. The average CEO reads 50 to 60 books a year. And there's some people that just read all the time, like Warren Buffett, Mark Cuban, all these guys, they just read, you know, uh, every day they're reading a book a day or, you know, a book every couple of days. And so um, that's, that's an aspirational goal for me. So education is a big part of it, reading, learning. Um, I would say, you know, and there's this saying by Brian Tracy, if you want to earn more, you got to learn more. So, you know, it's, it's not just a cliche, it's really true. And I've watched, yeah. you know, my net worth go up, you know, 20 X over the last four years, just from learning more, learning how to do something, how to do this, the stuff we're learning about real estate is, I mean, I can't underestimate how valuable it is. Like, you know, some of these, like even that book I mentioned, hundred million dollar offers, like my goal is to make a million dollars off of reading that book, right? I've got an offer I'm kind of putting together to try to figure out how to, how to do that, right? So, um, so I just think education is huge. And then um, I feel I, I want to give the same ones I had, but uh, um, you know, I would say, I would say another thing too about those three things. And I really think those are kind of core things for me, but uh, the taking the action is, you know, when, when it comes to having a real estate business, you really are an entrepreneur. And my cousin had recommended this book um, called Before You Quit Your Job by Robert Kiyosaki. And it was timely, you know, before I left my job, he wanted me to read this book. And again, I thought that's so cliche. Why do you read this book now? But I read it and it was so good because it talks about as an, as an employee, you can't make a mistake because if you make a mistake, uh, you lose your job or you make too many mistakes, you lose your job. As an entrepreneur, you have to be willing to make a lot of mistakes mm -hmm. and quickly learn. So you can't make mistakes forever, but you got to make all, you got to try different things, whatever, figure out what works. And then you go, oh, this thing works. Well, let's double down on that. And so you're quickly learning. So he describes that being an entrepreneur is like jumping out of an airplane without a parachute and trying to assemble one before you hit the ground. Yeah. And it's, it's true. Yeah. Is that you're, you're it's just true. trying to figure out how to make it work. And you're, and so not everybody's up for that, right? Not everybody wants to jump out of an airplane without a parachute. Me, it's like, oh, that sounds really, I mean, truly jumping out of an airplane without a parachute sounds just stupid, but in general, when it comes to how it works with business, it, it may work or it may not work, but you're trying to figure it out. Yeah. And so um, I think, you know, taking the action and trying, and to me, I got, you know, when I turned 40, I was like, you know, if I don't do this, when I get to be 70 or 80, I know I would regret that I didn't try. So to me, anybody who's on the fence of that, I say, just, just try, just keep taking action toward that because if yeah. you do it, it will, it, you know, you will never know unless you try. And you can always go back. I always feel like if I, if I quit my great medical sales job and make a 200 K a year, I could always go back and find another job, right? It's not like the world would end. I could find another right. job someday in the future. Right. Yeah. That's, that's, I think what you have to realize is like, what are your, what's your skill sets? And if you end up flailing out, crashing, burning, whatever, can you make money again? The answer is probably yes. Like, will you be okay? The answer is likely yes. You know, will your family survive? The answer is likely yes. Um, so if that, if the answer is yes, then take that risk and, and jump. Yeah, hundred percent. Cool, man. All right, Bronson, how can uh, our listeners get in touch with you or learn more about you? I know you got a lot of, a lot of good stuff. You got podcasts, you got, you're on YouTube all the time. You, you got all kinds of great stuff. So how can our listeners get in touch with you? Yeah. So we, we do have our YouTube channel, Bronson Hill. You can check that out. We also have on our website, uh, this is my ebook, how to use inflation to your advantage, 50 color pages, just kind of some ways of how to use real estate, precious metals, or even crypto, and just some ways to hedge inflation and actually make it your friend. That's at bronsonequity.com. You can also learn about our deals by going to the website and clicking the join button. We can start a relationship with you, but this has been great, Todd. Thanks for having me on today. Bronson, do you have like another couple minutes? Yeah. So let's, let's, we, we already hit inflation a little bit, but you, you brought that book up. What, what are your more thoughts about inflation? What's going on? Is it going to, how long is it here to stick? Um, you know, just, just quick yeah. thoughts. Yeah, quick thoughts. Yeah. So um, yeah, inflation, obviously everybody's seeing it, the pain in the pump. Uh, where I live in, in California, gas now on average is around $6.70 a gallon. Um, you know, it's not, I think I was in Texas, it was $2.80. So I'm like, dude, how are we? It feels like corruption in California. But anyway, there's that's another conversation. But uh, <laughs> everybody's feeling the pain with food, with all these different prices of all different things. But, uh, you know, how can you make it your friend? What, what actually can be done where you're using it to your advantage? And so uh, part of this that's changed is, you know, they, they created a lot of new currency, 40.9% currency 
uh, increase in supply over a two-year period. So from February of 2020 to February of 2022, this massive 40% bomb of new currency. And people just, I guess, just hard to even think about. Um, so that's the reason everything's costing more. And then things like the Inflation Reduction Act, which should be called the Inflation in Increasing Act, I guess yep. you could call it. Right. But they come up with these, these shady names. So politicians will continue to spend money. And that's one thing we know, especially in this huge debt-based system. So the way to get to really take advantage of it is to, uh, like kind of what we talked about, take out debt and buy real estate or buy assets that pay you to hold them that you pay off in future dollars that are worth less. So uh, this book just kind of talks about, you know, how that works, how you do it, how real estate works with it. What are some of the options out there? Um, you know, what are some of the traditional, non-traditional solutions to that? Love it. Love it. Do you think it's here for a while or you think it's, you know, I hear, I hear, uh, you know, by the end of 2023, it's going to be tamed back down. Do you think it's longer term than that? What's your, what's your thoughts? Well, frankly, I don't really trust the government's numbers. You know, I don't trust that it's 8% or 8.5%. I think it's more like 15 to 18%. And so I think it's higher than what they say. So even if it, it officially comes down to 5%, I mean, it's still, you know, probably 10% or whatever the amount of, whatever is, you probably just take it and double it. And so I think it's going to be persistent because I think politicians just can't help but spend money. And I think now we have more entitlements than we've ever had. We have yep. more, the welfare state is bigger than it's ever been. Now there's a lot of cities such as Los Angeles. And I think I was just reading about one in Chicago. They're trying to give out, you know, a thousand dollars a month to, for universal basic yep. income and all, I mean, all this stuff, it, it, nobody, who's going to pay for this, right? So it has to come out of money printing or other sorts of ways. So I, I think, I think inflation is here to stay for the long term. I think, you know, getting out of cash and getting into other assets, I think is just so, so valuable right now. Love it. All right, man. Well, I'll let you go. Appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, thanks so much for spending time with us. Uh, we'll put all the information to be able to contact you in the show notes so, so people can reach you. Um, again, appreciate it. Have a good day. Awesome. Thanks, Todd. Appreciate it, man. Hey, thanks so much for listening. I appreciate you being a loyal listener. Say, I would love to have you go on to our Facebook page and subscribe. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Go on to iTunes or wherever you listen and give us a rating and review. Don't forget to subscribe. It's a rating and review just helps us push this out to more and more people and continue to grow our audience and hopefully positively affect a ton of people out there that really need this and, and want this. So uh, the other thing I've got for you is a free ebook on my website. So go on to VentureDProperties.com, VentureDProperties.com and download our free ebook uh, on real estate and on syndication. And I've got some data points in there, some really good stuff for you. So I'd love to have you take a look at that. It's free. I'm not expecting anything from it. Uh, and, and also look, if you want some help in multifamily, want some help learning, growing, getting your business off the ground, I would love to talk to you about what it would look like uh, to work with me potentially and see if that's a good fit. So you can go up to coachwithdex.com and check that out and uh, we can definitely have a, uh, a call. Thanks a lot for listening. You make it a fantastic rest of the day. I'll catch you on the next episode.